going to talk about feature services in the ArcGIS platform. But before we get to the feature service, let's talk about this GeoJSON file I've got here. This GeoJSON represents uh, home sales in the city of Chicago for a three-year period. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's got uh, geometry and a set of attributes. But what's most important is to look at the size. It's over 150 megabytes. Now, the JavaScript API works very well reading GeoJSON files directly. But 150 megabytes is way too large to be serving in a web application. Let's bring that data into a hosted feature service. And what's powerful about a hosted feature service is that you get all of the uh, analytic capabilities of a SQL database through a simple REST API. It allows you to build applications that uh, explore that data in many different ways, whether uh, pulling in the attribute information in a data grid or mapping it. So we see this data set has about 85,000 points. And let's look at what it looks like when we map this layer in the JavaScript API. OK, so all 85,000 of those uh, sales points have drawn. I'm just showing the location of where they are. But what I want to call your attention to is the number of queries. It took 12 queries to bring this data down for uh, less than 900 kilobytes of compressed data. How do we do that? Well, uh, several different ways. First off, when you're querying the data out of that feature service, it's coming in protocol buffer format. That's a compressed binary format that uh, really compacts the data down, not dealing with uh, raw text. It's over HTTP2. Uh, we've spread the queries out so it's consistently pulling down a similar amount of data. Um, it's also served using broadly encoded format. And we see that the data is coming from the CDN. It's a hit from the CloudFront CDN, which is why the times for these queries are so small, sub 50 milliseconds. Now, the Esri clients, the JavaScript API and the runtime, know how to work with these hosted feature services. They work with it in such a way that they send repeatable queries. These repeatable queries allow caching to happen at different tiers, whether it's in the browser cache or whether it's at the CDN or whether it's cached within ArcGIS Platform's own feature tile uh, cache store. Now, another thing to call out is that the data, uh, since I'm just mapping the location, the JavaScript API is smart and not going to bring all of those attributes down. It's going to just bring the unique identifier, in this case, the object ID. Uh, let's clear this out and change to a different thematic style. Let's map the list price. So uh, I see the map. Uh, quickly updated. The API issued 11 more queries for a uh, little over 200 kilobytes of compressed data. But if we look at that, at the response, we'll see that we're not requesting the geometry because we already have that on the GPU. Uh, we're just requesting that list priced attribute. This allows you to build dynamic applications, uh, data exploration applications, where you don't know what your user is going to need to look at at the time. It ensures that the application just requests the data that's needed at the time it's needed. Now, a little bit back on the different tiers of caching within uh, ArcGIS platform. Um, you guys have built applications uh, using this technology uh, over this year that have reached billions of people. And it can reach billions of people because the Esri clients know how to work with these services in a way that supports caching. Uh, for uh, reference, during the peak times of COVID, we were serving over 175,000 queries per second. The JavaScript API team takes performance on the client side very seriously, and we've had two major updates since last Dev Summit. At 4.17 last fall, we see uh, improvements here uh, in terms of loading over 600,000 building footprints. In the next release of the JavaScript API, we have a next shift in terms of performance. So I've got uh, two applications here. The one on the left uh, is uh, version 4.16, which would have been in last UC. The one on the right uh, is 4.19, the version that comes out in a couple of weeks. If we look at the number of queries, we see the one on the left is issuing over 128 queries for nearly 6 megabytes of compressed data. Whereas the one on the right is issuing 44 queries 
for under three megabytes worth of data. I should say that this is over 375,000 points on these maps. Even more interesting is if you pop over to the memory tab in the debugging tools. So we see that the 416 version is using over 300 megabytes of memory. That's a lot of memory for a web application. If we look at the 419 version, we see for the same visual, it's only using, it's using less than 40 megabytes worth of memory. The reason that we can do this is that we stream the data directly from the compressed binary format instead of uh, parsing and uh, deserializing the data as it comes in. This allows us to stream the data as soon as we retrieve it. So if I reload this layer, this application, you'll see those features just stream in as they're ready. Okay, so that was a tour of uh, the platform's feature services and uh, performance improvements in the JavaScript API.